Hey there and welcome back to another Stereo Launch video and today we are going to be building a custom template inside of Studio One. Now custom templates are great because if you have a certain workflow that you use over and over again, maybe when you're writing a song or mixing a song, if you kind of do the same thing each time or at least start from the same place, if you build a template, then that way you just got to open the song with a template and all your tracks and all your plugins and everything is right there and ready to go. You don't have to open a blank song and then add each track and then you know put your plugins on the track and do all the things that you would just do over and over again a template just lets you boom right there all in one spot it just makes everything so much easier and faster so here we go All right, so here we are in the Studio One startup page. If you use Studio One, you're very familiar with this. So the first thing we need to do when creating a template is we need to create a new song to start building our template in. So create a new song. When you pull this up, this, these are kind of the templates that are built into Studio One, but these don't really fit my workflow in general. They're good to look at, maybe get some ideas on how to set some things up but they don't really work for how I do things. And that's why we have the option of building a custom template. We're gonna start with empty song, and then it doesn't really matter on the song title because I'm not gonna save this. And just here's my settings I use for a typical session. You can change these each time. That's not really locked into your template. So hit, hit okay. And because we chose empty song, we are now here in the song page with no tracks or anything like that. So that's exactly what we want because we want to start building it out custom for ourselves. Most of the stuff I write is typically guitar centered. I have drums, bass, guitars, and vocal. And so we're going to build one for my songwriting workflow and my starter for when I'm recording my own songs. If I'm recording another band where we got full drums and all that stuff, uh, it'll be different, but this is for my songwriting uh, template. So the first thing I need to do is come in here and add Easy Drummer. That's the starting point I use for my drums. And I typically start with this preset, the Modern Vintage. Um, it's just kind of old habit. It's a good sounding set to start with. Um, I will often change it, but it's a good starting point. And then because I changed it to Modern Vintage on that setting, when I save my template, it will save that. So when I create a new song using this template, it'll start with the modern vintage setting on the kit. Let's close that out. Now it's time for audio tracks. So I'm going to create a bass audio track to start with. I'm only going to create one and we're going to do blue. See B for bass, B for blue. That's about the extent of my coloring scheme I use. You can use whatever works for you. Uh, input one is where I plug my bass in on my interface, so I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color on this one to orange. There's not really a good D color, so I use orange, starts with O, which is round like a drum. Super creative. So we're gonna go here to, we're gonna create our guitar tracks. And we're going to do five guitar tracks. And we're going to make them green. Again, G for guitar, G for green. Keeping with the theme here. Input one is fine for now. We're going to change a couple of these things, but that's a good start. And you notice it did guitar one, guitar two, guitar three, guitar four, guitar five, which is kind of cool. Oops, I had my cursor in the wrong spot, so I put it between the drummer, drums and the bass. So I'm moving the bass back up there. And then we're going to create one more. Make sure that that's down there so it adds it at the end. Vocals. Uh, just need one vocal for now. And do instead of purple, it's violet. V for vocal, V for violet. Input is going to be two. That's where I plug my microphone in typically when I'm recording my vocals. And OK. So that gets us. The, the basics here, we have our tracks. I'm gonna go to the mix window, open that up, and I'm gonna change a few things in here. So 
We have guitar one, guitar two, that's fine. Guitar three, I'm gonna change the color to a different green. Same with guitar four. It's gonna be the same green as guitar three. And guitar five is gonna be a different green. And that's basically because typically when I'm writing a song, I will have two rhythm guitar parts and I will double track each one of them. So this will be guitar part one I'm paying this this way, and then um, guitar part two, left and right, that's the double track, and then this will be my lead guitar. So we're gonna go ahead and change the uh, name on that one. And then I'm gonna leave this one centered. You notice I panned these already. I'm gonna leave this one centered because usually when I lay down my first guitar track, I don't want it panned, I want it in the center because if you're recording and it's panned and coming out of one speaker, it's kind of weird for the first guitar. It makes more sense with the other ones. So my first guitar, I'm just gonna leave panned right here. All right, so now we need to add some plugins. All right, so I'm gonna start here with Amplitude. Uh, one great thing about PreSonus is you can have a favorites list on your plugins. So I'm gonna pull that into my bass track. Because when I start with bass, I usually start with this setting and amplitude, and I kick the gain up just a little bit. This is all can be changed later as I'm, you know, if I do something I don't want the gain up, obviously I can come in here and change it. I'm just kind of setting up for my standard rock song. Sometimes if I'm doing something a little more southern rock or country or Americana, I will change this, but this is kind of just my standard rock setting for now. And so I'll do that, bring an amplitude over here, and I will start with my collections, Mesa Boogie, Dual Rectifier, Rock Steady, and pull the gain back. And again, as I said, when I open this template, up for the next song, it will have this gain pulled back. It will save that and remember that, which is very helpful. All right, for my main guitar sound here, um, I usually use my amp head, and I run that into the torpedo captor, uh, which is kind of a load box, and then from there, I use the torpedo wall of sound uh, to do the cabinet emulation. So I have a setting that I typically like to use. It's Stereo Launch Marshall 4x12, it's got a, I'm assuming, a Marshall 4x12 with uh, vintage 30s in it. I'm guessing from the name there. And then uh, it's using an SM57 and a Royer 121 on that. And then I'm just going to do the same thing again on this track. And again, these are just starting points. They can always be changed once I start recording. But this is where I typically start. On my lead guitar here, I'm going to just go ahead and copy this on over from the other ones. You know, maybe pull the gain, push the gain back up a little bit. And that's pretty much it, except for one thing I forgot real quick. Again, um, I said that I use my amp head when recording my main guitars, and that torpedo captor actually comes in on input three of my interface. So. Bass plugs directly into one, then I do my main guitar sounds with my amp on three, then I plug my guitar back in, my guitar into one, because that's where Amplitude is, and then uh, same for my lead, vocals on two, so I think we're all set and ready to go. I don't worry anything about putting plugins on the master fader if you do that, if you have a, a bus plug-in for compressor, whatever you like to start with by default, you can obviously do that here as well, but I don't need to do that at this time. So now we go up here to File, Save as Template, and then we will call this, we'll just call this one Standard Rock Songwriting 2 because I have another template that I use that's similarly named. You can change the icon and stuff here if you want. I'm not gonna worry about that. And of course, you can add a description here if you have multiple templates and you just wanna you know, remind yourself about what's in it or how it's set up, all that kind of stuff. Hit OK. Close. No. 
All right, so now when I come to create a new song, here's these templates that are the default ones, but if I go over here to user, there's the one we just created, the standard rock songwriting two. This is the one I usually use currently that I built before. This is the same as this one. I just have a different name on it. And then I can open up, and you can see it's loading those plugins. And I come here and you see my painting is still intact. All my colors are still intact. If I open up Amplitude, you can see it's still the rock steady setting. The gain still pulled back. You know, if I come here to the, the lead, you can see the gain is a little higher there. All that good stuff. Um, if I open up Torpedo Wall of Sound, you can see it's my Stereo Launch Marshall 4x12. So all those settings stay. And so, it's super handy to just kind of get started and already know what you have. And like I said, you can tweak and add and adjust. If I need more vocals as I go along, I can just add them, more guitars or whatever, or keys or whatever. You can add all those, but this is just kind of my starting point for writing a song. That's pretty much it. So you just create a song, build out all your plugins, your channels, everything you want, save it as a template, and then you're ready to go next time. So as you can see, having your own custom templates for your songwriting, for your mixing uh, or recording or whatever, super helpful, really can kind of speed things up. And also you just kind of have a consistent platform to start from each time. Of course, you can add to it or subtract to it as your project you know, evolves or whatever. And you can add multiple templates for different things that you do. Um, but it's just really nice and handy to have all those things with your presets on your plugins and everything ready to go. So. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments down below. Hit like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I've got plenty of more videos coming out around songwriting, home recording studio, production, all that good stuff. And also make sure you check out the uh, description below. I've got some links there for some guides around recording guitars and also just kind of setting up a home studio and all the things you might need for that. So once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.